You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? It means we should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, liar, to see by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. There we go. Now we've got all that out of the way. So how do we engage the world around us with this Ten Commandment, right? Uh, is this just talking about we can't go around saying GDs and JCs? Is that the point of it? Is that what our Lord really is, is concerned about? Well, certainly let's not do that. That's not good. It's what, not what our Lord wants. Uh, but I think we need to talk about this again in regards, and this is how we're doing this uh, for our study here time together. Uh, good over and against evil. The things that bring life, the things that bring good gifts, those are the things of our Lord. Those are the things that are good. And the things that uh, are enemies of these good gifts and not just opposite, but enemies of, right? So if we have the things of life, then we have the things of death. So what is this good gift that our Lord is actually giving to us in this uh, second commandment or protecting for us, right? Because maybe we can see, and it's good for us to see the Ten Commandments as this hedge, this fence that he's building around the good gifts that he wants to give to us. So what is it? It's obviously his name. Names mean something, don't they? And when we're engaging with, uh, with our friends uh, who, who don't believe, who don't go to church, or family members who have uh, left the church a long time ago, maybe we should talk about this, right? Uh, in this sort of way, when our Lord actually places his name upon something, uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find uh, places in, in Scripture where when our Lord actually gives his name, uh, it's, it's for anything other than for good. It's for blessing. It's for life. It's for the things of uh, daily life. It's for the things of spiritual life and religious life and, and worship life. We see that in the Old Testament. We see that in the New Testament. We see that in our daily baptisms as well. So when God places his name upon us, it's for our good. Because it means something, right? Think about this. When, when a parent places his name upon uh, the newly born child, right? Uh, writes his name on that birth certificate. That means something. Along with that name comes everything of that person. The father writes his name upon that birth certificate, and along with that name comes everything. And the father's taking this responsibility of saying, no, this is my child, right? And I take responsibility for this child. I will bring him up. I will give him the things that he needs. I will make sure that he's clothed and fed. I'll make sure that he's brought up with good education. I will love this child as my own body, right? This is what a father does or what a father should be doing when he gives his name. In the same way, we can think about it, how a husband gives his name to his wife, to his bride, right? This is a good thing. We're going to talk about this a little bit later in the sixth commandment when we get there, but this is a good thing, and it means something. The bride knows it means something. The husband knows that it means something, too. When you give your name, it's for an ultimate good. Well, that's the way of our Lord here. He actually gives his name. He gives his name to his chosen people. His chosen people are those who uh, he's, he's chosen for himself. Which, remember, going back to what we learned last, uh, last time, too, uh, our Lord doesn't desire the death of a sinner but that all would come to repentance and believe in the truth, would come to the knowledge of the truth that, that he died for all of us, that he wants us to be saved, that he's done it all for us. He created us, he saved us, he sanctifies us daily. And so when he places his name upon us, this is for our good. So we should call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks, as the Catechism teaches us. We should see our Lord places in his name upon us in the holy waters of baptism when he says, Eli leads out, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm placing my name upon you. You are my child. You're not an orphan, right? You're not this slave out there. You're not this nobody, but I've placed my name upon you. You're mine. I'm your heavenly father. I'm going to give you all the things that a father should give and does give to his child. Yes, sometimes that even includes correction and reprovement. But even that's for our ultimate good. Even that's for our repentance and being brought back to the salvation that's in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. 
This is what our Lord does. So the gift of a name is a real thing. Let's talk about it like that. Let's not just throw away this name as if it doesn't matter. As if God's name is meaningless. No, God has placed his name upon you. You're called by his name. He's for you. Let's talk about our neighbors like that too. Let's talk to our unbelieving friend like that too. God's name's for them. God's for them. Christ is for them. All of these blessings are for them. It's what God does. It's who he is. All right. We'll continue on next time with the third commandment. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Thank you for watching Higher Things Video Shorts. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell icon for content notifications. You can follow Higher Things on social media and on our website, higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing, we ask that you remember us in your prayers and donations.